Cool. Here we go. All right. Welcome, guys. Dr. Frunky live here. Haven't done this in a little while. I've had a lot of requests to do this, so uh, definitely happy to be able to do this. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my camera a bit because I haven't done this in a while. I'm not set up for it. And there's only one way to know how to do this, and that's to just do it. They don't really let you practice. So here we go. Let's do the camera a little bit like that. That should work. What is up, guys? I'm going to let some people filter in here. Uh, I wanted to make a live video tonight just because I'm bored. And I wanted to update everyone about the status of the channel. And so uh, thank you guys for dropping in. Uh, what's, what's happening? Okay, now I've got the, uh, now I've got the uh, people coming in. Is this a no pants episode? Absolutely. I have no pants on whatsoever. I'm actually, uh, yep, yep, I have a BBM on my member right now. It is a thing. Just kidding. What's going on, guys? I am totally just messing around. Welcome, welcome. We're going to have some fun tonight because uh, I'm just sitting here with a pile of knives. Uh, I have a, a whole lot of new knives, and I really wanted to show you guys and just talk to you and just see what's going on. Uh, there have been a lot of things going on in my life and in uh, the channel here. And so, you know, I just wanted to get out here and get in front of it and just kind of take care of the channel here. So uh, I've got some new knives. I'm gonna go ahead and start out by talking about these guys right here. Uh, hopefully a lot of you were able to see the video on this guy. This is the Talon, the Frank Fisher and Robert Carter Talon. I have been carrying this <clears throat> knife every single day pretty much since then. Uh, I was out for about a week of vacation uh, and I carried this every day of that. I took it with me uh, and it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, so let's do a little breakdown of this. I realized that in the, um, <clears throat> in the Talon video, I didn't really get into the specifics of the knife as well as I wanted to because, well, it was a 10 minute long video and I wanted to make this one. So, uh, let's see. Is everyone asking, are BBMs worth it? I want a BBM, BBM, BBM. Uh, how's it going, beautiful knives? Yeah, the claw, the claw. All right, I didn't get to show this knife off <clears throat> as well as I wanted to. Again, this is uh, the Robert Carter and Frank Fisher Talon. Uh, I, I wanted to just get this on camera again. I'm hoping that this video is actually coming through in HD. Will you guys let me know? If this is coming through in HD, I just got a new router tonight. It's another reason that I wanted to go live to see if my live videos would be going in HD. So somebody comment uh, down below. Yeah, it's in HD. That is great. I bought a new router and that fixed the problem. The reason I didn't go live very many times before uh, is because my router used to make it come over in 480p and that's just not really worth watching most of the time. So. Now if I can get it in HD, that's really good. So, uh, the Talon is here. It's got the M390 blade. It's got that four alloy Zerkutai going on right here. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I just stare at this. Uh, so, Chad Nichols makes Mokutai. Alpha, Alpha Knife Supply makes Timascus. Various other people make various other products. But this is a Chad Nichols product. Four alloys, man. Uh, did you guys see the Talon that sold at auction? It had the uh, Zerkutai uh, the Zerkutai scales. It was a bolster lock design. Really amazing. It had that four alloy Zerkutai, a big piece of it. That went for $7,400. $7,400. Unbelievable. That was uh, way more than double the price and close to triple the price of this knife right here. So... The reason that I love this knife so much is that uh, it comes very close on the tail uh, of this knife right here. I haven't really gotten this one on the camera much here for YouTube, but uh, I definitely wanted to talk about this. I feel like the BBM is hot again. Uh, I feel like a lot of people, for some reason, in the last like three or four weeks have been getting very excited about BBMs. Maybe it's because of the Talon coming up and Rob's name is being passed around and some of his work. But uh, I wanted to show this one here is, uh, this is a BBM that has some very interesting features. The 
Fuller has got the heat treatment still in it. So when they heat treated the Nitro V blade and they took it out, Rob noticed that the uh, heat treatment here came out very evenly on the Fuller. And so he was like, that's that's awesome. I'm going to leave that. And then he satined up the rest of it. And it gives it gives this this really interesting look. From afar, it almost looks dirty. But uh, if you get up close and you take a look at it, it's got a lot of color. I really hope that's coming through in decent quality for you guys right now. There's some blue, <clears throat> yellow, red, brown, black. Uh, it almost looks uh, like it's on fire. It's kind of cool. I like that. I really like that. And then uh, it's got the Mokutai going on right here. So, uh, what's happening? Bunny is in the house. He came for Tickle Tickle time, and uh, we are very happy to have him. And so, what I really wanted to do with this video, besides show these things, is uh, just open the floor to some questions. Uh, you know, Nick is really successful with his Ask the Nick videos, and they're a whole lot of fun, but I don't get as much time to make them, and so I wanted to uh, go ahead and do that. So, I'm going to try to answer questions as they come down. I'm going to try to pay attention to them. I'm looking at them right now. So shoot some questions across. I'll try to answer them, as, answer them as we go through. I think you're to blame for the BBM revival. I don't know why. I made the BBM video months ago. Like, I haven't really made a lot of BBM video. Well, maybe a couple. I did call it my favorite knife from last year. And there's a reason. This, this knife is just nice to me. Now, it's not for everyone. Not everyone is going to like this. The reasons that I love this knife. Everyone always asks me, what is it about this knife uh, that you like? M390 versus M4. Uh... Both are really good. Uh, M390's got better stainless uh, properties, and M4 uh, takes a really nice edge, maybe a nicer edge, and it's tougher, so uh, it's hard to say. Anyways, uh, the BBM, uh, it's really good if you like to spider flick a knife, but if you don't like to spider flick, it's not the knife for you. If you guys go and watch the Frankie and Bird video that they made when I sent them my green BBM, uh, it didn't really look like they were having too much fun with it. They were opening it kind of with their thumb. It's not a very good thumb opener. If you like to thumb open knives, it doesn't really do it that well, to be perfectly honest. But I really enjoy the spider flick, and it works very well. So I actually have these two on hand right now. Also Rob Carter knives here. But the other reason that I have these out tonight is that I just got a new knife. Because these are collaborations with Nick Chuprin, or NCC Knives. And I just got a new NCC knife. Uh, definitely going to have a video on this guy. This is a tiny, tiny knife. Sorry to ask. BBM. Bare Bones Model. It stands for Bare Bones Model. The reason that they call it that is it's very simple. Uh, Rob initially had a Bare Bones Model. It just had the pivot. It had like one screw and a clip. It was a very flat, very plain knife. Small, just like this. And then Nick uh, sort of modified it with his own CAD design and then milled it like this. I, I'm in love with this particular design. But uh, Nick made this knife as well. This is the Mark I. Uh, if you guys go back on my channel a little, a little ways, uh, there is a video on the Mark Ones. Uh, I had a Mark I small and then a Mark I micro. This is the Mark I micro. And uh, as the name <laughs> suggests, it is a micro knife. I mean, this is a pair of three right here. Look how tiny this thing is. Uh, are those Chuprins hard to get, Doc? Uh, well, he doesn't have a ton of them, but they're around. I've seen uh, micros circulating a lot. Uh, this one caught my eye just because of how clean it was. It's got this bronze handle, bronze anodized hardware, a bronze anodized backspacer right here. Kind of cool. And then a plain clip. It actually has a clip. So the one that I had before was from Frankie and Bird. And uh, they sent me their knife, and theirs does not have a clip on it. And so I kind of passed over this knife because uh, it didn't have a clip. Nick offers it with and without, and so when I saw this one with a clip, I kind of jumped on it. And uh, that is because I actually have a third BBM. What's happening, Knife Crazy? What's up? Uh, I have a third BBM. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I have one that is pink. It has the fuller, it's stonewashed, and it has pink hardware. Uh, I'm not really a pink carrier. I don't didn't really want to wear it. And so I sent it to Nick Chuprin, and I think it's going to come back looking very similar to this. And so we're going to have another set of matched pairs going on uh, in the collection here. So 
Uh, moving on to some other new knives right here. I got both of these new uh, Para 3s right here. I actually sold both of my other Para 3s and I bought these two because these two are actually cheaper than the two that I sold. I had the uh, S90V carbon fiber. That was like 200 and something dollars, like 220, 240. Yeah, two, uh, it's 220 maybe. It was an expensive knife. And then I had uh, the Maximet one, and that was like 180, 170. These are both coming in in the 170 range, so it was a little bit better. And they're the newer ones. This is the Blade HQ DLC M4 version. This is the Rex 45 version right here. And I don't know much about Rex 45. I know somebody asked about that in the comments. Uh, from what I understand, this is similar to HAP 40 but it's an American-made uh, sort of I, it's a CPM-made HAP 40, basically. And that's why they put it on these burnt orange scales, because the burnt orange is supposed to be the HAP 40 colors. Technically, I guess it's about the same steel, chemically, similar to like an M390 and 204P kind of a situation, if you guys catch my drift. So that's neat. Uh, I've never really experienced this steel. I understand it's not the most stainless this is a very nicely put together pair of three. This I just took out of the box moments before I uh, I came on video here, and it's already, it feels like it's been broken in. Uh, unlike the M4 version from Blade HQ, this one actually came very stiff. I'll attribute that to the uh, DLC coating. I'm sure once this wears in and I clean it up, it will also get smoothed out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm done talking about these new knives. Uh, I have so many other knives around on the table right now. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this guy out right here. What is this? What is this? Huh. It's an interesting knife. Uh, this comes to me by way of Three Rivers Manufacturing. TRM. Those, uh, nice folks, Marianne Halpern and her husband run, uh, this company up there. And I have bought some products from them. I have my um, my Mule Team knives over there. I've had their scales for a long time. If you have a Mule Team knife, go check them out uh, for their scales. But they also make pocket knives. A lot of people are going crazy about the Neutron. Yeah, the Thunderbird. You guys got it. Yeah, I'm not going to G10, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not going to the Gathering. Uh, I was thinking about it really hard, uh, but my schedule won't really allow it. And then the Talon came up and took a whole bunch of my money. So, no, I'm not going to the gathering. Uh, I will save up and I will go to Blade Show next year, time permitting, but uh, I'm not going to the gathering. So, uh, this is the Thunderbird. What do you guys think of this knife? They sent me this knife for a review, and uh, I'm figuring out how to review this knife. Because this knife is similar in a way, uh, if I were to describe it, to like a 50s Cadillac where it's totally purposefully stylized and it is sort of interesting in a way. And you kind of have to love it in this day and age of modern folding knives. So if you have an old Cadillac, maybe this will work for you. If you have an old blue Cadillac, this might work for you. Uh, it's got some other interesting features, including a ruby ceram uh, a ruby bearing in the uh, pivot right here. Look at the faceted pivot hardware. Sort of looks like an eyeball or a spider web almost. Interesting. On this side, it's just bronzed, and so it's just a regular screw. <laughs> Ford Thunderbird, Doc. Ford Thunderbird. Maybe. Does it? Oh, is that what's coming together here? It looks like a Thunderbird. You guys are right. You guys know cars better than I do. Thunder Cooper Falkenberg. You guys are right. I need to get some pictures. I need to go and look at pictures of the old Thunderbirds, and I need to learn more about this knife. They just sent it to me. It's very, very well made. Their machining capabilities are excellent. I have had a couple of their knives in my hand. I recently purchased that Terzula collab that they had. I ended up selling that uh, because it was not really uh, my style once I got done with it. I realized that modifying knives is also... Probably not a good idea most of the time. I've been doing it for a while, and it pretty much just ends up me losing money. So uh, I would recommend not doing it as much as I do, and uh, do it way less, but like maybe once or twice. That's totally fine. 
because I just hope that it uh, that it works. I think Nick Shabazz gave me some pretty good advice recently, and he said that uh, you know if you have to modify a knife that you don't really love in the first place uh, to make you like it, you probably won't really like it afterwards either. So uh, generally, look for a knife that you really love initially, and then maybe you can make it a little bit nicer. That's some good advice there, Nicky. Always with the philosophy. So congrats to Nick. Nick moved out to San San Diego. He's loving life right now. Good for him. I hope he's enjoying it out there in California, sunny California, where things are way more fun and uh, legal, including knives. Speaking of knives, take a look at this. Here is a new Fanatic Edge Omen. This one belongs to my good buddy Nico. Nico, I don't think you're in here right now. It's probably the middle of the night in Greece right now. I apologize for having to do this so late in the evening, but take a look at this new Omen right here. Uh, Fanatic Edge has been doing this cool milling pattern. Take a look at how this looks in the light. Very cool stuff. Nicely done, Andrew. Really nicely done right here. This is his hex pattern. He did some light blue anodizing on the rest of the frame. You can see that here. Maybe it's coming through. Maybe it's all washed out in the light. Some nice blue anodizing. I'm from SD. Not that much is legal. Well, certain things are legal there that are very much not legal where I live, so uh, I think uh, maybe, yeah, you know what I mean. All right, so, next. Did you get your Micro Typhoon? Yes. Yes, I did. And then I sent it away. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to review that knife. Uh, next topic. What do you guys want to talk about? I'm going to open the floor to discussion now. I'm just going to sit back and answer questions. There are 56 people in this chat right here, and so we're going to talk. Ask me anything. I'll do my best to answer it. I'm going to just sit back. It takes a minute for these to come through. Uh, there is a bit of a delay between me asking you these questions and then the uh, the things coming in. Why the spider codes? LOL. I don't know, man. There's something about spider codes that are just very functional, and these uh, para threes are really good. Uh, Will Moon. who boy, Will Moon. You guys want to talk about Will Moon? Is Will Moon here? Will Moon, are you here right now? Please say hello if you are here. I really hope you are. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's talk about it, guys. Let's talk about it, okay? We're just going to get out there with it, okay? Let's talk about what happened with Will Moon and the knife. I made the Storm Crow video. Who, who saw the Storm Crow video? Did you guys see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Austin, thank you, man, for messaging me. I'm seeing that now. That's the delay. Whatever time that is, that's the delay. Yeah, I did. Saw it, saw it, loved. Okay, good, thanks. So you guys saw it. Okay, good. So that's why you're here. Okay, so Will Moon, when he made the Storm Crow, this is the whole story. I want to tell you the whole story from my perspective. I want to start out by saying I never had any intention of being mean to Will Moon. Uh, he's a guy trying to make his living by making knives. And this situation came up, and I was honest in my video about how I felt. I realized the harm that it might cause to a small business owner, but I'm just trying to help my friends from having a problem with a knife that I had a problem with. So, Will Moon made the Storm Crow. When he first made the Storm Crow, he put a post on his Instagram that said, hey guys, I'm gonna send Storm Crows out to some YouTube reviewers. Who do you want me to send them to? And a bunch of you guys said Dr. Frunky. And so thank you guys for saying that in the first place. Uh, I really appreciate that. So Will actually reached out to me. This is the second time I had spoken to Will. I sent Will a message uh, through Instagram, asking him to modify one of my knives back in the day, but I ended up going with somebody else. And so uh, he said, I'll send you a knife. And I said, thank you so much. That would be great. These knives look awesome. I'm sure I'm going to love them. I want to help you sell them. They look awesome. Well, he never sent me a knife. Uh, you know, six, eight weeks passed. Maybe a month. Maybe it was a month. Four to five weeks passed. I didn't hear anything. And then my buddy Mike reached out to me. He goes by Heels with Steel. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine uh, in real life and on Instagram. Good guy. And he sent me the Storm Crow that he had gotten because he said, I got it. Check it out. I said, thanks, man. And so I got my hands on a Storm Crow that way. 
Well, the knife had the obvious problems that I discussed in the video. I reached out to Will. Will said he would send me another knife. I'm not... Uh, another thing I want to address. I've seen some posts on Instagram recently about how YouTube reviewers are in it for the free stuff. All we want, me and the others, is free stuff. Let me tell you something about free stuff. All of the, the tiny amount of free stuff that I've gotten in two years of doing this uh, is like pennies compared to the amount of money that I've hemorrhaged into this hobby. So please don't have any sort of uh, any misunderstandings about free stuff. I don't get free stuff. No one tells me they're going to give me stuff. And if they do, I'm going to tell you guys. So I'm, I'm going to be clear about that. So I'm not in it for the freebies. Will offered to send me a knife, and he didn't do that either. Uh, when he told me that he forgot about it, I said, don't worry about it. I made the video, and I sent the knife away, and I waited three months. I waited three entire months to send that video out. I did not want to. I really didn't want to uh, because that's not really my nature, to be negative towards somebody. But a few things happened, and I had about five to ten people, honestly, contact me in that time period and tell me that uh, they were having problems with their moon knives and please would I make a video about it and so eventually it happened and uh, so I just made it happen and uh, the owner of the knife and a significant number of my very close friends uh, asked me to publish the video and so it happened uh, and he got upset and uh, it shows uh, in his posts that he was very upset with me and uh, I apologize Will I didn't mean to be mean to you. I tried to be objective about the situation, but I was very upset. And uh, I, it looks like your knives might be fixed, maybe now, but maybe they're not. And now you're making a new knife, so I'm going to move past it. I'm not going to talk about it again. If you ever want to hear the story, just come back and watch this video. I'm never going to talk about it again. Will is probably a decent <clears throat> human being. But, sorry. <coughs> That does not mean that he makes excellent knives. So, there's the story. Moving on. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> Perfect. So, uh, talking for 20 minutes uh, is definitely a strain. So, moving on. Next question, guys. Open up the floor here. I'm going to play with some knives. Now, so, this is an omen. This belongs to my buddy Nico. Today's Grail, tomorrow's beater. We've got the Thunderbird. That looks like a Thunderbird, not a Cadillac. Good. This has a semi-integral construction, by the way. We'll talk about that in the video. <clears throat> Move these uh, spider codes out of the way. Throw these up here. NCC knife, tiny. I'm going to run out of space in my case. So let's move these guys into the forefront here. Here's another knife right here. I'm going to leave these guys out for a visual while we talk. So... He made me an Instagram post from today. He did. He asked me to try out a new knife. Uh, I'm going to move past it, uh, and I'm not going to do it. So, uh, moving on. It's not about the knives now. It's about the way the situation was handled, and the situation is handled. So, moving on. Who's, maker's books, who's a maker whose books you plan to get on? Uh, well, I want to get on, like, Stan Wilson's books, but that may not happen. Uh, I have asked Rob Carter if I can be on his books, but that'll be like four or five years from now. And so uh, we'll see how that goes. Loving the NCC Micro. Didn't look so tiny on Instagram. I know, it looks big in the pictures, but it is in fact tiny. Riot Jack, are you still high on it? Did you get a chance to handle the copper? The Riot Jack is a fantastic knife, but it is huge. It's like f over four inches, honestly, and uh, it's just not carryable. For about 98% of you guys out there, probably. It's just really huge uh, and really intimidating. But it is a finely built knife. In my video, I wish that it was a bit smaller. If they made one at three and a half inches, it would be great. Uh, Lee Lerman Hydra. The Lee Lerman Hydra, that's a wonderful knife, but I would never carry that knife. It's just not an everyday carry knife. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a fine dinner knife folding knife that is super nice but just not designed for ideal carry so and it's also prohibitively expensive for me at this time i know i have some expensive knives here but uh, i do have a cap you know i'd have to spend what all my knives are worth to get one of those right now so 
It's kind of difficult. Next question. What's going on, guys? Is the Pero 3 worth it? Do you have a PM2? Yes, I have a PM2. I find the PM2 to be a bit big uh, in everyday carry scenarios uh, all the time. And so sometimes I like having the slightly smaller profile of the Para 3. It is nice because it's a similar functionality and it's smaller. Uh, so very soon I'm going to actually get, check this guy out. You guys remember this guy, huh? My Aramis Akhmadov carbon fiber scales with the blades we love hardware. Beautiful scales here. I'm going to do that to this pair of three as well. Uh, Aramis is going to get me those scales one of these days. Uh, I'm going to have him modify it a little bit so that I can put a lynch clip on this guy. I'm going to, I'm going to use that uh, black lynch clip that I've got on this one once that's all done. So that is the plan for this. The Rex 45, uh, it was just one that I was curious about. I wanted to see what it was all about. It's really well made. I may not hold on to this one. Um, if you guys want one of these, just just let me know. I don't think I need to keep this knife for any reason, but uh, I'm not a hard to use tester. I could send this to freaking uh, Cedric Ada. I bet he would. Uh, I bet he would like this. That'd be cool. Maybe that'd be fun. Uh, so, do you have any custom orders coming up soon? Yes, uh, I have a uh, Jason Guthrie Scout coming up, and I have two Koenigs coming up. So I've got some pretty interesting things. I actually have an order with Nick at NCC Knives as well. Uh, and I have an order with Andre Thorburn, so that's going to be a while out as well. So I've got, uh, I've got a few orders in right now. The Pair 2 needs a milled tie clip. No, I like the clip on the Pair 2. Uh, let's see. Please send it to Cedric and Ada. I know, that guy is great, man. My channel is like nothing compared to that guy. He freaking makes me... He works, dude. He cuts so much stuff, I can't believe how much he cuts. Yeah, more Koenigs are coming. More Koenigs are definitely coming. I've got a very special combination of an Arius and a Goblin coming your way in the not-too-distant future. Bill has been sending me work-in-progress picks for the last few months, and it's going to be amazing. So, yeah, this NCC Knives is very cool. <clears throat> How much would you sell the 3 for? Just send me a message on Instagram. I, would, I wouldn't sell it for any more than I paid for it because it's just a spider coat. So... I'm not trying to be some kind of flipper. I'm not, I'm not, not trying to do that. I just don't really need it because I, I ended up with two of them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Jonathan, thanks. Thanks for the love there, dude. Taking questions, guys. Taking questions. Showing off the Rob Carter collection here. This uh, is something that's very special to me. These three knives right here. The Custom Tech, especially. What a spectacular knife. This has full... Rob Tanium. So Rob does his own sole authorship materials, and uh, this stuff is just amazing. And to see this trio together, this is like some people have called this the holy grail of Robert Carter collections. I'm just very, very humbled and very, very happy to have this. So I'm happy to put it on camera and show you guys. That's the really the fun part right here. So let's see what else do we have going on here? What is new and what is different? I'm gonna have a giveaway soon, guys. I'm going to have a giveaway. I have reached uh, over 5,000 subscribers. I'm actually at about 6,500 YouTube subscribers right now. You guys are all awesome. And I have a bunch of stuff to give away, including this knife right here. This is one of the new uh, BRS knives. This is the Evolve series. This is called the Minute Man, I think. Uh, Snuggle Bunny did a video on this one. This one comes to us by way of our good friend... Uh, Ty Spectrum? Yeah, he sent this over here. Nice guy. He's got some amazing stuff going on at his shop, so go and check him out. I'm going to do a, a giveaway with some of this stuff. I have a VDK goat to give away, so we're going to have some knives for you guys. You guys are going to get some stuff here. I have uh, some paramilitary two scales. I have the Carter Trinity, so you guys know I've got the Carter Trinity here. As a matter of fact, I've got this Carter Trinity I'm gonna give this away. So I'm figuring it out. The problem is I have so much stuff to give you guys that I don't know what to do with it all. I don't know how to distribute it yet and once I figure all that out, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Copper scales for a paramilitary too. We're gonna have a nice giveaway guys. I like you guys. I appreciate every single one of you that follows me and uh, supports my channel and I wanna give back. And so uh, some other people have lined up to help me do that. So thank you to all of you folks as well. So that's going to be great. What is the oldest knife in my collection? The oldest knife right now. 
in my collection is going to be oh well the oldest knife in my collection <laughs> hold on uh, I'm coming I'm coming I'm coming uh, yeah got it okay this is not the f I don't think this is the first time this has ever been on camera but this is the oldest knife in my collection if you could call this a part of my collection this is a CRKT Ryan uh, they still sell this knife, as a matter of fact. Uh, it This was the first pocket knife that I ever got. The first folding knife, outside of a Swiss Army knife, okay? And uh, actually, recently, I took this guy apart, cleaned it up, sharpened it, and honestly, it's in pretty good condition, considering. It runs on washers. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, this thing is, is old. I didn't know anything about knives at the time. But look, you can see... CRKT Ryan, there's some rust on this blade. Uh, this was made in Taiwan. Who knows what steel this is? Probably the AUS-8 or AUS-6 or something terrible. This is my oldest knife. It's terrible. I don't really like it. It features the locks system, so now it's a pretty much a fixed blade. So, uh, but no. No, it's not a fixed blade. It's pretty terrible. The Ryan from CRKT. Tip down carry only terrible stuff next question let's see who is your go-to business for pimping or customizing a knife that has to be fanatic edge you guys know this fanatic edge has done a handful of knives for me these two are my knives right here this is another one of his omens right here he actually sells this knife in and of itself but he started as a knife modifier and he still has a very active business doing that there are some other great folks tie spectrum that I mentioned earlier, it does a great job with his work as well. Uh, these guys just offer various services. I think Andrew at Fanatic Edge has a very comprehensive knife modifying portfolio. So go check him out. Uh, I would say start there and then look at some other folks. There are going to be bene you know, benefactors and detractors to all of that. Uh, so let's see. Here's another couple of interesting knives. Chinese made knives, guys. Chinese made knives. Have you checked out the Koenig Mini Goblin? Yes, I handled it at Blade. I have one coming. Uh, it's not here yet, though. It's almost done. At 10K, are you going to make some Dr. Frunky t-shirts? I might. I could. I don't really, I didn't know you guys wanted that stuff. I don't, I don't know that anybody really cares all that much to watch this and uh, have a Dr. Frunky shirt. I'm just some guy, you know. I'm not a Nick Shabazz. Nick Shabazz is really capitalizing on his name and uh, his brand right there, but uh, I'm just some guy who's making some videos, trying to have a good time. Uh, here's the Real Steel Megalodon, Chinese-made knives. Here is the Wii Knives 811 Tai Chi. I don't know if there is anything more controversial than saying the word Chinese knife on Instagram. I get so much hate stuff from people about Chinese knives. It's really unbelievable. There is a lot of xenophobia going on, and there is also a lot of interesting economics discussions at uh, both ends of the spectrum. You have people who say, don't buy Chinese because don't buy Chinese because America. And then you have people that have actual educated answers as to why you shouldn't. But really and truly, you're going to have to, okay? These knives are way too good to deny, okay? This Integral Wii Knives 811 Tai Chi is very, very good knife. Very nicely made, spectacularly made. I have this Zerkutai clip on it from my good buddy Adam Purvis. Adam, I don't know if you're here right now, probably not, but thank you for this amazing clip in Zerkutai. Looks really nice uh, in this lineup right here. The Real Steel Megalodon coming in at $200 with uh, M390 bearings and titanium. Pretty nice stuff right here. I think you guys enjoyed that video recently. Got a lot of views. Very affordable knife right here. I think this is a budget Shirogorov. Honestly, without being a knockoff, without being a straight knockoff, this is as close as you can get to a very budget uh, Shirogorov. It is not dissimilar to a Neon. I actually have a Neon right here. I actually have a Hatian coming over here as well. Uh, so we're going to get a neon Hatian combination video. Uh, very, very nice knife, this Neon. I may need to get one of these guys. This is a nice knife. Uh, so that's cool. Got a bunch of stuff right here. Uh, how about this? I love surprising you guys because I don't bring these knives out very often. Whoa. 
Whoa. That is a uh, Trevor, Trevor Berger front flipper right here. Very nice knife. Very nice knife. But took me a minute to understand. Some of these front flippers are not all front flippers are made the same, okay? In my front flipper discussion video back around Christmas time, um, I discussed that there are some variations and that these knives need to be done the right way. Well, I've learned another twist in the world of front flippers, and that is not all front flippers are meant to be opened in the same way. And that is because some knives flip very well with the thumb, but some South African makers are all about the top flip. That is a new thing too. There are top flippers and front flippers. I know that that is not uh, that it is common knowledge, but this is probably the first knife that I have experienced as a front flipper that is much easier to flip as a top flipper than as a thumb flipper. And so it kind of changes the fiddle factor there a little bit. Some knives are not top flippable. I couldn't really do it easily with my three and a half inch chamois, but this knife does it quite nicely. And take a look at the etch on this Damasteel. Really happy that this is coming through in HD. I hope you guys are seeing this with some decent picture quality. Okay, so do I have any m -techs? You better believe I have some m -techs. Hold on, I have the holy grail of knives right here. I have a Z Hunter. Oh yeah, Z Hunter, signed by Nick himself. You know, this is the, uh, this is the slip joint version. Yeah, so, you know, it opens. And then, uh, you know, without without the liner lock, I just, you know, it's the slippy joint. Okay, it, it decided to lock up that time. Usually it doesn't, so, you know, pie on my face. Z Hunter, got one of these guys. Uh, here's a cool knife. This was on my Instagram a couple of times. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. Woo! Look at this knife. This is definitely, definitely a frunky knife. This is also courtesy of Mr. Shabazz. He sent me this wicked skull and spine blade. What an amazing thing. Basically, basically, guys, I mean, I mean, this, I'm losing my mind right now. I didn't even know this was going to happen, but this is happening right now. Let's see, guys. Let's see. who, Which pivot? Which pivot? I always do these comparisons. Okay. Which pivot, guys? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I need this to focus. I need this to focus right here. Which pivot, guys? Choose one. Choose a pivot. Yep, let's see. Down below, comment right now. Got the skull versus the Fisher pivot. Look at that thing glistening in the sun. <laughs> Nick and Frank would hurt you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, this knife is incredible. So I did not realize that was going to happen, but here we go. If you guys want the $4 version of the Talon, that is not anything actually like the Talon in any way. You can pick up this Tac Force knife with this ridiculous ergonomics and this ridiculous blade. But you know what? It's also kind of awesome at the same time. For all of the reasons that uh, we don't like. To be honest, it's it's centered. It's got, I mean, it deploys. At least this one locks up. <laughs> so these are the worst knives that I have. Yeah, somebody asked. All right. Let us take a look here. Next question, guys. Next question. I got some knives here. Just throw these out. Have some pictures. These guys have been out here for long enough. Next question, guys. Open it up. I'm just here to have fun. I hang out for an hour or so. There's 70 of you guys here right now. 69. Really happy that all you guys are here right now. I want to just talk. Just talk. It has a troll you can use. What sharpening system do I use? I use the Spyderco Sharp Maker for very simple touch-ups. Anything beyond that, I don't mess with because I don't have the time or the uh, ability to really have a sharpening system set up all the time. Uh, it's just not something that I'm really interested in. I'd rather pay somebody a few dollars to just do it really, really well. So uh, that's a thing. When you went to Blade... Did you lock the nail pack inside the suitcase? Negative. I did not. I have never, uh, and I repeat, never had the TSA go through my bag uh, and search it. And I have not had anyone go through my knife case either. Uh, and I don't anticipate that. I really don't think that that's a thing that's going to happen if you just have a regular uh, suitcase with a case of knives in it. I don't think they're going to go through your stuff. This is the coolest knife ever, guys. 
This makes me want to quit knives altogether. It's just that good. They went through my bag and knives when I went to Blade this year. Did they really, Tyler? Tell me what happened. Did they, did they take anything out? How did you know that? I am the same on sharpening. Sharp maker or USPS? That's correct. That is my sharpening system, the USPS. That's totally right. Sorry for the delay in me responding to these comments. I'm trying to see them now. Used to work for TSA. Was only concerned about bombs and guns. Just saying. That's right. Are your knives insured? I might try to insure them as jewelry on renter's insurance. Uh, nah, it's fine, dude. It's just money is money. It go, if it goes away, it goes away. It's fine, dude. They leave a note in the bag. Yeah, okay. More questions, guys. Taking questions now. Tyler, thank you for joining. Fine. No questions. Any other hobbies? Uh, neurosurgery, man. I do neurosurgery. I do brain and spine surgery. That's my hobby outside of this. Uh, I do knives, but then I go to work... And I do brain and spine surgery on people, and then I learn about that. So that's fairly time-consuming between this and that. So those are my hobbies. Look at this, guys. Look at this. I have not met, made the video on this. I need to talk to Scott Cook. He gave me his phone number. That was a little bit intimidating, and I need to call him and talk to him about the... L Loxa? Loxa? L Losh? People told me it was pronounced not the way I was saying it, and so I don't want to call it. Favorite surgery to do? Spine surgery. Spine surgery. I really enjoy spine surgery. I can't tell you a specific one, but I really enjoy them. Since you're a surgeon, when will you reach Doc Slava and Civi status? Uh, in about two to three years, my friend. In about two to three years, I will be reaching that status. I'm still a resident right now, so I'm still learning. Take a look at this knife with the insane Damascus 14 karat gold thumb studs. That's right, 14 karat gold thumb studs. Mother of pearl inlays on the pivot. And back here, anodized bronze right there. Damascus inlays, stippling, integral, stippling, stippling, pivot, 3D milled pocket clip, spring hybrid type. Unbelievable knife right here. This is a perfect knife. Scott Cook Loxi. Loxa? Lo Lo you guys know how to pr pronounce it. I'm going to call him, and I'm going to figure out how to pronounce it, and then I'm going to make a great video highlighting this spectacular knife. Scott Cook is the inventor of the integral handled folding knife, from my understanding. This is a spectacular piece. Guys, this is easily the most expensive knife I have had on my channel by a significant margin. Absolutely unbelievable. Have you seen the Madrid Sabenza with the spider coal hole? Yeah, I have. That's on that guy Razor, uh, Razor Ramon's channel. That guy is uh, smart. And he is uh, opinionated and he likes to modify his knives. I like the guy. That looked really cool. I really liked that uh, Sabenza with the spidey hole. They should totally do that. Did you get your Micro Typhoon yet? Yes, I got it. Um, and then I shipped it away. Uh, it is a very well-made knife. I hope you enjoy the Micro Typhoons. I'm not going to make the video about that, though. Next topic. Here is the Michael Raymond Starlet. This is a very nice knife. And uh, this is also an integral. I really uh, I need to learn a bit more about this one. This These two knives, for some reason, I have writer's block when it comes to these two amazing integrals. I made all those integral videos, and then I didn't make these. Uh, I really need to get on these and get these shipped out to their very patient owner. The, both of those knives are owned by the same guy. Taking questions, guys. I'm opening up the floor to any questions, anything that comes across. I want to do a knife consult on my mixed rider custom SMF. I would like to get my hands on a mixed strider. However, uh, if I say anything negative, there's a very real chance that somebody will uh, take me out. That is a, a real thing. Integral fever is a real thing. Yes, absolutely. Integral fever is a thing. And that, my friends, I'm going to move this out of the way and bring out a couple of other guys, is largely due to this knife. This is the Peter Rosenti Nirvana. And here is my small Satori. I love these knives. I actually carried my Satori today while I was at work. The action on this is unbelievable. It has smoothed out over time. Peter Rosenti makes incredible knives. Of course, they're integral handled. If you watch my channel at all, I ramble about this for video after video after video. 
obviously it's a thing for me and uh, I like them. I want to see more of them. Somebody asked about the Riot Jack earlier. It is a spectacular knife, but it needs to be about 3.5 inches, maybe 3.4 inches. I think 3.4 inches is a place that needs to be explored a little bit. Did you hear that Nick Shabazz got Ligma? What is Ligma? I don't know what that is. Spider-Go Pison, that's coming. Nobody makes smaller integrals. Okay, lots of questions here. I'm going to go back here. If you don't have your if you didn't have your channel, do you think you would be into knives as much as you are? No, the channel forces me to keep doing stuff for you guys. That is okay. It has propelled me through this. Ligma balls. <laughs> Ligma balls, you guys got me. Good job, guys. You jokers. You, I gotta punch all of you guys. The Ligma. <laughs> I have not seen that. I gotta take a look at this Ligma integral. <laughs> oh, man. You guys got me hard right there. I don't even know what to say. I'm like blushing. That's hilarious. Oh, man. I decided to skip on the jack because it's just too big and I'm broke. Yeah, very good. Very good. All right. Well, guys, you know, I wanted to answer any questions. There are 78 of you guys here, and I want some questions. Ask them. What do you guys want to know? What do you want to see? I have a bunch of knives. I have a bunch of random knives, guys. You got to tell me what to bring out. Check it out. Something Obscene Company Nemli. I'm just going to keep busting out random knives that you guys didn't know that I had because I just have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time to make as many videos as I want. So, do you guys like cleavers? Let's talk about cleaver blades. Do you guys like these folding cleavers? Will you get into watches? No, I will not get into watches. Uh, it's too expensive. And I have a cell phone. Uh, favorite new knife maker? Uh, ooh, favorite new knife maker? Uh, I like this guy. You know, Felix is driven. Uh, this knife is not a perfect EDC, but he is driven. And he's got, he's just got heart. I don't know how to explain it. I like this guy. I think he's doing good work. Uh, Nick Chuprin is an up-and-comer. He is fantastic. Really, really good. Craig Brown. Maybe Craig Brown. Favorite new maker. That guy's really crushing it right now. Really a bunch of good guys. Not a cleaver guy. I have a custom VDK War Admiral. I have that. Oh, man, it's a lot. Okay. Riot Lambert collaboration. Not my favorite one at the show. I, for some reason, just didn't really like it. I couldn't really tell you why. Uh, Kirby Lambert's designs are nice, and the customs are cool, but I think when they're translated into a production knife, suddenly they're not as spectacular because he does really good work with his finishes on exotic materials, and I think that's really where he shines nowadays. Uh, when you reduce it to a Riot with Micarta, uh, it just sort of turns into another knife. I don't really know how to describe it. There are so many frame lock flippers and stuff out there, frame lock knives out there. Here's one right here. The uh, Gavco Wee Knives Trash Thresher right here. Thresher. I called it the Trasher because that is the knife that it is based on. But this is indeed the Thresher as it was always supposed to be named. Thank you, Jonas, for clearing that up and making it have the right name that it was always supposed to have. So taking a look at this. What about a cleaver in cleavage Instagram photo op? If I can set that up, I will let you know, my friend. Any fixed blades, and what are your thoughts on them? I like fixed blades, man, but I don't have a need for them, uh, and I don't want to carry one. I don't see the purpose in me carrying a fixed blade in my setup, so it just doesn't happen. Really digging Jeff Blauvelt and Tough Knives posts on Instagram. What do you think? I think he makes beautiful knives. I think he makes really nice knives. I had one of his knives... Uh, collaboration with Elijah Isham on here, the Black Knight Satellite. That was cool. Custom scales on the jack coming. The brass needs replacing 100%. That brass is way too heavy. It's like an 11 ounce knife. Any Grant and Gavin Hawk knives? I don't have a Grant and Gavin Hawk knife. Those knives are weird to me most of the time. And uh, sometimes when you try to reinvent the wheel, you just try to reinvent the wheel. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Their hawk lock is a very fun mechanism. It, it is, it's very smooth and very snappy at the same time. Uh, it just hasn't been implemented. I just haven't found one of their knives that really screams to me. If anything, I might check out the mud. That might be a knife that I like, but I wouldn't really keep it uh, forever. So uh, when you, if you break out a knife at work, does it ever start a conversation? Always. It always does. Favorite knife to EDC? 
the BBM. Do you like j jig knives? Yes, but I can't get one in my hand. Do you think a spidey hole would fit on that thresher? Absolutely. What are some knives that you have already announced that you are excited for? Uh, I don't know. Some of the Spyderco knives look pretty interesting. Really, I look for custom knives. I'm sort of gone, gone this way. Do you test these expensive blades? No, I don't. I am not Cedric Ada. I do not test these knives uh, with any really rigor. I just carry them and I use them in my everyday carry. Absolutely, I use them. I use this to open a box today. It's a. This is the best blade shape for EDC, pretty much. Like from my EDC, it is so good because it's safe for patients. It's awesome for opening boxes and packages. Oh, I'm very happy to have this knife. Very cool. So, uh, let's see more comments. First stream of yours. What's happening, Anthony? Welcome, dude. I got so sick and tired of those frame lock flippers that I got into traditional folders. Any opinion on those? Those are nice. Nice. I feel like traditional folders are somewhere that uh, it's sort of like, I don't know, it's almost like a fine wine where you have to find an appreciation for it. I need a knife with a clip uh, and I don't mind having a flipper and I don't have the regulations to need to carry a traditional. So I don't because they're less convenient and they're less fun to me. Uh, they're nicely made. Uh, have you gotten in anyone outside uh, of influence of this channel into knives? Lots of people, actually. A considerable number of people. Spiderco Myrtle type, eh? I don't understand. No, I have not. Uh, I reviewed the Myrtle. That talent is perfection. Sharp Grail, you are totally right. Wee Knives or Riot Knives? Uh, definitely Riot. I think Riot has a clearer focus uh, in their products, We Knives kind of did does this shotgun, you know, bomb thing where they just release a billion knives and most of them stink. Uh, and a few of them are okay. Riot is consistently like very good knife after very good knife. They really don't release bad products. That is a thing. Uh, I'm just going to show this off some more because we can't. Do you watch Advanced Knife Pro? I do. That guy has a great channel. He has video editing. I don't edit my videos because ain't nobody got time. For that so I don't edit my videos I do one take and uh, I think about it a whole lot before and then I just make it happen so questions guys thank you guys so much for this I really enjoy taking questions I haven't really done that in some of these uh, other ones very well do I look pretty hmm yes you do you look very pretty I wish I could see your face right now <laughs> what would happen if you could change the blade with the blue handle. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Wow. If you hand that talent knife to someone and tell them, yeah, definitely don't put your hand on this choil. Uh, it's incredibly, it's unbelievably sharp. Let me see here. I got a piece of paper right here. <clears throat> you want to know how I test knives and their sharpness sometimes? I get mag magazine paper. This is the best stuff to test sharpness, okay? Got a magazine paper, little halo ad right here. Uh, so, if you guys want to see how sharp this is, take a look at how sharp this forward finger choil is. I'm just going to touch it. I'm not even, I, I don't even have to do anything. Like, you want to know what sharp is, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull the paper. I'm pulling on the paper. I'm not even pulling on the knife. The knife stays there. I just... That's just the choil. So that will definitely take a finger off if you're not too careful. The rest of this blade is just unbelievably sharp. It's scary. Very scary sharp. Rob Carter said, I can't be responsible if a neurosurgeon loses his fingers on one of my knives. And uh, so, yes, that thing is crazy, crazy sharp. You don't need the tops of your fingers, right? That's true. You have ten of them. Really, you could probably lose a couple and still be fine, right? Trust me, I'm a doctor. So, yes, this knife is perfection. It absolutely is. Very happy with that. Very interesting to have it right next to this Gavco. I need to get another custom Gavco in my life. I just like that guy, Michael Gavick. Absolutely a cool guy. Here's a knife that I haven't brought out yet. Bam! Shirogorov F3R. Probably also should do a comparison video with the Hati. Thanks again to my buddy Nico at Today's Grail, Tomorrow's Beater for sending this hot tea ultralight along for a sweet review. Hi, is this Talon 
more to do with Rob than Frank. No, it's a, it's a halfway mix. It's happening, Scott. Favorite grind on a knife, full flat grind versus a hollow grind, depending on who's doing it and how thick the stock is. How does ZT keep costs down on the USA-made knives? Most USB blades with titanium and CF usually cost more. Uh, that is a good question. Mass production is how. They have, uh, they have mass production capabilities, uh, and they probably get good deals from the companies. And I'm not sure exactly. They do a very good job of keeping costs down. There have been some issues with ZT knives as of late. Uh, I've noticed that not all of them have excellent and sturdy lockup. So here is a uh, 0801 Ti. You know, this one has been aftermarket modified, so say what you want. But go and take whatever ZT you have and give it a little spine whack, okay? And just kind of see what happens. This one kind of disengages fairly easily, just if I'm hitting it on my own hand. So uh, it is a thing. And that has nothing to do with the modifications because nothing about the lock face or the, um, the, the knife was modified in any way. Uh, say what you will, but go test that on any of your uh, ZTs right now. Uh, and I think you might uh, be a little bit surprised at the frequency that that happens. So we'll see. We will see. Any chance you're going to make a behind-the-scenes video? Uh, I can. I don't know if anybody is interested. What I like to do is kind of bring things from off the camera that you're not expecting, like a Kershaw concierge. This is quite the uh, dichotomy right here. This is the collector's conundrum. These knives are both in my collection. This knife costs like $35, and this knife costs like... <laughs> That uh, mm -hmm, a lot, a lot of money, a lot of money. It's more than that, like two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Like a lot of money. So this and this, people are like, why do you need a knife that costs this much money when you have this? And that is because if you have to ask, you just will never get it, right? I mean, that's the whole long and the short of it. The answer to that question is, if you have to ask, you just don't understand. So there we go. But this concierge is quite a nice knife. What a snappy little thing. I got this in San Francisco. D knives, I really enjoyed San Francisco. Uh, I went there on a work-related trip, but I did get a day and a half to enjoy myself in the beautiful city. Uh, I went by the Fisherman's Wharf out there, and there is a sh knife shop out there. Uh, it's called... Oh, man. SF Knives or something like that. It's out there on the pier. And uh, this is my cheapest knife. Anthony, by far, this is my cheapest knife. 100% paid like 40 bucks for this at the store in California with tax. So like not a huge deal. But I didn't have a knife when I went out there. And I got this and then I mailed it back to myself. Concierge is based on the cannabis. Yeah, this is a nice knife, man. Kershaw now bring in the heat without an assist. This does not have a speed safe assist and it fires like a rocket. I have not even taken this knife apart to uh, lube it up or anything like that. Uh, it does run on uh, ball bearings in there. Amazing action for 40 bucks. What's happening, Alex? What's going on? Weeby Knives. That's right. Weeby Knives. Great store. Thanks, D, for reminding me of that. Great store. Check it out if you're ever in San Francisco. Nice folks in there. What do you think of the Ferrum Forge collaboration? Um, Ferrum Forge is an interesting company to me. If you watch Austin's review of the Ferrum Forge, uh, the new Pro Series or Pro Line, whatever you want to call it, Pro Series, uh, you'll notice that he says that he thinks that those knives are better than the USA-made knives, and I would have to agree. It's a funny thing. I, well, here we go. Here's a mass drop. Uh, Ferrum Forge Falcon. I actually have this one also thanks to Nico. Yeah, he lets me hold on to these knives for a while so I can make some good videos. So uh, it's interesting to me. I really, 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 really do not like the Hoback rolling detent as it is implemented in the Ferrum Forge series of knives because what it usually causes is either a knife with a weak, soft detent or a knife with a detent that's so that protrudes so far that it inhibits the closure of the knife uh, to a very annoying degree. And so I like it when I get a Ferrum Forge design with a regular detent because the designs are usually somewhat okay, at least from a practicality standpoint. And 
you get you don't have to have all that silly sort of uh, movement and stuff going on. I feel like if the end user is having to adjust the detent, you're doing something wrong because uh, you can get a very perfect detent at a very reasonable price point. The detent on this Kershaw Concierge is very good and it costs 40 bucks. So just give me a good detent and stop doing that, please. Uh, next. Let's see, guys. I'm going to read through some questions. Just spine wax my 462. No blade play. Guess I got lucky. That's good. Uh, I find that some of them have had some problem. Pocket dump. I don't have anything in my pockets right now. As we discussed at the beginning of the video, I am not wearing pants. I'm just kidding. I am wearing pants, but I don't have anything in my pockets. i got to plug in my phone here because it's going to die because I've been recording for an hour. You guys, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoy getting live with you guys. Uh, just really just a good time. It's been about an hour. I've been hanging out with you guys. I've really enjoyed it. I got some great videos. If you want to go back through this video and see a whole bunch of the stuff that I'm going to have content coming up on, uh, what I wanted to touch base on here at the end of the video is to talk about my life and kind of moving forward with the channel. I am a sixth year neurosurgery resident. Okay, what that means is I go to work every day, I do neurosurgery, and then I come home and maybe I can do this. It is becoming harder and harder for me right now because my schedule is getting busier and busier as I move up through the ranks. And so uh, I think that the volume of my videos is going to go down substantially in the, uh, in the imminent future. But uh, what I'm going to do is keep making videos, but I'm going to make really good videos on really good knives rather than some really good videos and then some videos that are maybe negative. I kind of want to move away from the negative stuff. The Will Moon thing left a bad taste in my mouth. And so uh, I'm just going to move on from there and uh, just try to make it awesome for you guys. Try to make it enjoyable and just uh, make some really fun videos and still stay active in the community. If you don't have Instagram, you need to download it. Just get over it. It's not for girls. It's not only for girls. You can download it and get on there and check it out. Uh, but I will keep making videos for you guys. I'm gonna keep working as hard as I can. Nick Shabazz is doing a great thing, but he's also going through some life transitions right now. So it's it's really hard to stay on top of this. There are some good guys out there. Slicey Dicey was in the house. That guy is really ramping up, man. I gotta give props to him. He's like a, he's like a reviewer as a job. Like that's what he does for his life. And so like, do it, man. Go and be big at this because this is hard to do as a side gig uh, to neurosurgery. So uh, I'm going to keep working on it. Neurosurgery is brain and spine. I had dinner with a neurosurgeon. He doesn't like knives. Can you throw in some budget knives reviews that we can afford? You know, man, again, that's the thing. I'm not I'm not Nick Shabazz, man. I'm, I can't do all those. I'm going to review the knives that I like to review. These are This started out, this always was supposed to be videos of me and my collection and some of the things that I've learned along the way so I could educate other people. Uh, it's really not, I'm not going to be a reviewer like that. I'm not going to get every budget Kershaw and every Spyderco. I'm just, I don't have the time for that. I can't do that every single day, so... Can Alex get a shout out? What's happening, Alex? How you doing, man? Slicey Dicey, what's happening, dude? You're here. You are in the house. Good to see you guys. Well, listen, uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. My phone is about to die. Really, really, really enjoy these videos and going live. I know I don't do them as often as other folks, but now I have a new router. Now I can go live in HD reliably. Uh, and so we're going to get that up for you. Next knife cast will be coming out in the near future. Check out that video. If you guys uh, want to reach me, okay, send me an Instagram at Dr. Frunky on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, send me an email at drfrunky at gmail.com. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying, take care. <laughs>